Hi everyone. In this session, we're going to talk about some tools that are available to you. Uh, they are free. You do not need to pay for them. They do give you an option of subscribing. Um, I have subscribed, but the free version is available. And one of the tools that I'm going to use here and talk about is Grammarly.com. It helps proofread your paper. It scores the academic writing immediately, and it helps you detect plagiarism, which in the academic setting is equivalent to um, stealing. Uh, now, I personally, uh, I have unknowingly and unwittingly plagiarized and been called a plagiarist, which makes me feel um, very anxious because I would not intentionally do so. And that's my take, and I believe it's Dr. J's take too. Uh, we want to help you to learn from those areas where you might do something or write something or perform something that could be seen by others as a negative. And so using tools to help you identify that is very beneficial. Remember, it's not always brains on top, it's brains on tap. We're going to take a look at this site. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to go to the editor. Now, I've already subscribed. And this is my account. I'm going to go to the new document. And over here, I'm going to be able to adjust my goals. Typically, our audience, because we're looking at an academic setting where y'all are very knowledgeable, we're going to hit knowledgeable. We're not experts yet. You know, somebody who has a uh, doctoral uh, degree, like Dr. J, that would be in the expert area. Your professors would be in the expert area. Um, the formality, we're not writing just a, a, a text message to a friend. So it's not informal. It's also not neutral. We're in the formal category, and this is going to restrict slang and colloquialisms. So it's going to look at your paper, see how you've written your paper, and to ensure that it's in the formal appropriate format for the college setting or university setting. The domain, well, we're in the academic setting, okay? And this strictly applies all rules and formal writing conventions. So now we already know somebody's going to be proofreading your paper before you submit your paper to your professor to make sure that it's written for the appropriate audience, that it is in the appropriate formal setting, or written in the formal way, uh, that your domain is for the ap academic setting. The tone, I've always selected neutral um, for my research papers and the work that I've submitted for school. And typically, I'm trying to inform and possibly describe. I've reset. I mean, I've set my goals for this paper. And now I'm going to hit done. Now, what I need to do is go get the paper that I've been working on, which was disaster preparedness, and I'm going to copy that paper and bring it over here and copy and paste it right there. So I'm going to go back to my paper. I've already highlighted it just to show you. And I'm going to right click, copy, and now I'm going to right click and paste. There are my goals that I did set. I want that, and I'm going to hit Done. Now, immediately, it does an overall score, and it's showing me that I, based on this program, I have an 87, and this is associated, this has been graded by Grammarly based on the goals that were set. Here is the word count. Now, some professors might say you need a certain amount of words for your paper, like our Discussion post, the initial needs to be 250, and the uh, response post, the two of those need to be at least 100. Well, this paper, um, for us, typically our research papers do not require uh, a particular number of words, but they do need to address fully the questions that are being asked for that particular activity assignment. Here's word length, senten uh, sentence length, Readability, it's telling you about your paper, and it says here, your text is likely to be understood by college graduates, but may not be easy for many to read. So y'all are college graduates. You're going, you've already graduated college. Now we're going for the BSRT, and we need to make sure that those who are reading this document 
are in this area and for you it'll be dr j or myself or whomever you might have in the future college graduates vocabulary it's telling you about unique words and rare words below average and it's going to give you the opportunity to up that score if it's necessary i'm going to close that and immediately i see up here there's 51 alerts i'm not going to go through all 51 alerts but i can click on as i go through the document i can click and scroll down i see my abstract is fine there's nothing highlighted or indicated there but immediately i see in my first paragraph man-made well i come over here and it says some readers may find man-made dated well in our readings it's used man-made if it was not in our readings or in some of the resources that we use in our field I might want to change it to human made, but you know what? It is in our readings and I'm gonna discard that. Immediately when I discard it, it's no longer identified as an alert. It's not a mandate saying they, you have to change it. It's just trying to bring your uh, attention to areas that Grammarly is identifying as uh, potentially an, uh, a point of concern. So I continue to the paper, I'm not even looking over here, but I'm going to go over to Scarcer. When I go to Scarcer, it says incomplete comparison. It's telling you here how to correct that. I'm just going to delete that. Important is the next highlighted word. When I click that, it's saying this word, the word important is often overused. Yeah, and I remember I used it several times. So I'm going to change it to essential. It says here now local. It wants me to add the word that, and it's explained to you why. You may be missing the conjunction that before the word local. Consider adding, adding it. It's not telling you you better, but now you need to look at this and identify or decide what do you want to do. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go down to, oh, why? I made that adjustment, and it highlighted it again. Why? Because now it might be a clarity issue. And here is their suggestion on how to reword that part of your sentence. And I do like their suggestion. When I correct that, it changes it in the body of my document. I look down here and it says that can be correlated. It's passive voice. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna worry about that. I like that. Next one was effective. It's asking me, maybe I wanna change it to useful. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take their word and see what they say. Well, now they say very useful is something that I might want to change. Click on that, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try each of these suggestions in the document, and I think I like beneficial better. You didn't have to. I could have deleted it and moved on. The next one is this. Now you can see it's telling you what their thoughts are, and this is saying that this word, this, is unclear. What is it referring to? Say so it says that it may be unclear who or what this is referring to. And again, it's not mandating. It says consider rewriting the sentence or remove that unclear reference. Well, if this is referencing up here, which is the quantitative research, you know, you might want to write. Uh, quantitative research is useful in implementing. So your choice, we're just going to delete it. Next one is were, it says passive voice. You might consider rewording that. I'm gonna dismiss that. There are key elements, choose a different word. Our crucial elements, key elements, uh, critical elements, up to you. Your choice, I'm going to delete it. Now. Every time I make adjustments, you can see we originally started with a score of 87, and now it's gone up to an 89. I'm going to continue down. I see or, and it's saying I'm, it appears that you're missing a comma. Considering, consider adding a comma. Well, I think I, I am missing. I forgot that. And that would be a grammar correction. Negative is highlighted. Well, it's saying would I like to consider changing it to adverse? Adverse patient outcomes, negative patient outcomes. I think I like adverse. I'm going down. As I'm going through my document, I'm just waiting for or looking for anything that's highlighted. R. Passive. I'm going to leave it. 
positive, obtaining positive outcomes. Well, that's not a bad word. It's not an inappropriate word. It's just saying it might be overused. I like it. Now you can see my score has gone up to a 90. Safety should be. It's passive. I'm just going to delete that. Continue down. Well-being. Well, inconsistent hyphenation. Well-being. Where? How do I want to write this? Okay. It's saying that in my paper, I have used this word well-being, but I've written it different ways. You need to be consistent in your paper. So if you're going to do it this way, that's fine. If you wanted to do it with the hyphen, you know, um, I'm going to say the hyphen. So I'm going to update all. Now in my paper, it's going to make those adjustments promptly. Squinting modifier, it may be unclear to the reader what promptly is modifying. So you need to come back here, reread your sentence, look at it and say, okay, is that something that I need to adjust? Consider moving the modifier. It says again, consider. I'm going to leave it. Important, different word, essential. I want to scoot down here. Um, I'm going to just make a lot of these uh, adjustments, reestablishing. Well, it says spelling. Be performed, passive voice, basic, essential. Now, I wouldn't do this, but I want to skip through as many of these as I can and get to the end so I can show you what is the final product. Okay, as we finish up, uh, it's saying that this sentence here, passive, are met, passive, possibly wordy sentence. So now, if your sentences are not clear, it's going to give you an opportunity to reword. It says possibly. It's up to you. Uh, I'm going to delete it, but each time I do, look up here. My overall score is improving. Unclear. Key, crucial, add a comma. You know, so I want you to just look at this before. You can see that I'm just making some corrections. And because of time, I'm trying to quickly go through this and show you hard to read sentence. Well, a knowledgeable audience might find this sentence hard to read. So that's saying that your professor, when reading this, might say, what is the, what is the student trying to tell me here? So you get an opportunity to correct that. All along, look at the score. So now I have corrected my paper, okay? All the way from the beginning, it's given me an overall score of a 99 based on my goals. It says that correctness is looking good. Clarity is very clear. Engagement is in very engaging. And delivery is just right based on the goals. If I come down here, I can do a plagiarism check. Now, when I do the plagiarism check, it's checking all the resources on the websites everywhere saying, okay, did I at any point during my paper plagiarize? And this is an important check. Now, there are some resources out there that say uh, any percentage of plagiarism is wrong. Um, some resources are going to tell you, some college professors, less than 10%. Well, I would advise you that, you know, any anything that says it's been plagiarized is an area where you should relook and see if you need to adjust. The 1% uh, that it's saying is right here. Uh, it says the availability of essential utilities such as water. That's a common phrase. You know, it says it matches this source 1%. I don't agree. I'm going to get rid of it. And now based on the plagiarism check, it says it looks like your text is 100% original. So now I have a pretty good feeling that this paper is appropriate and ready to be submitted. You can save it. You can download it. Uh, typically, I'll just highlight everything and go all the way down. And I copy everything. And then I go back to my Word document. And at this point, I would copy and paste this in my new document and 
reformat. Okay, this paper now is not in the appropriate format, but it has gone through a grammar check. It's gone through a uh, plagiarism check and a spell check. At this point, when I reformat it, I'm ready to save the document according to the specifications that we have for our program and then upload it and turn it in. I hope that this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.